Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be doing some stuff with non-standard bases with linear transformations. So we're going to define a transformation that takes us from R2 into R2 with the image of the vector xy being 3x plus y and 4x plus 2y. We're also going to define a non-standard basis. The non-standard basis of R2 will be 1, 2 and 2, 1. What we're going to do is find the matrix of T relative to the basis B. So just to give a quick interpretation to what it is that we're doing here, here's what we want. We want to determine A. Actually, we'll refer to it as A prime. With multiplying A prime times a coordinate matrix X relative to the basis B, we want that to be the same as the image of that vector relative to the basis B. Now the way that we're going to do this thing is we're going to take our vector x that is relative to the basis B, take the coordinate matrix x relative to basis B. First thing we're going to do is transition that back into our standard basis and the way that we do so is using transition matrix P We'll define that in just a sec. Then we're going to send it through the transformation T, that is to say multiply it by the matrix A, and then multiply that by the matrix P inverse to transition it back to our non-standard basis. So a couple definitions for us. P is going to be the transition matrix, transition matrix from B to the standard basis. Notation I like to use for the standard basis is capital B for basis, little s for standard. I realize that sounds like BS, but I'm going to tell you that anyway. A is going to be the standard matrix of transformation T. So that's going to go back to the definition of what our transformation does to a pre-image. And then P inverse is going to be the transition matrix from the standard basis to our non-standard basis. So again, three-step process. Transition the um, representation in the non-standard basis to the standard basis. Find the image of that by multiplying by the standard. Uh, matrix of transformation and then transition back to our non-standard basis. So this guy right here, P inverse times A times P, we're going to know that thing as A prime. We say that A and A prime are similar matrices. So with those things in mind, P is determined by the two vectors that are in our basis B. So with that in mind, start a new page. So the matrix P is going to be the matrix formed by uh, B vectors as columns. So the matrix P will be a 2 by 2. The first column of P is going to need to be the first vector that's in the basis B. So that vector is the vector 1, 2. And the second column of P is going to be the second vector of the basis B. So that'll be 2, 1. So the first column and the second column, these are the vectors of B. Next, to set up A, and that's going to come from our transformation itself. So the interpretation that we're supposed to give A is that the, um, well, let's write it down like this. This will be the first component of the image, second component of the image, coefficient of x and coefficient of y. So with that in mind, taking a look at our transformation T, the first component is supposed to be 3x plus y. That'll be 3x plus 1y. And the second component is 4x plus 2y. So 4 and 2. 
Next up, we are going to need the inverse of P. Now, normally in order to get the inverse of P, I would simply grab my calculator, type P into the calculator and ask for the um, inverse of that. Unfortunately, I've left my calculator on campus and I am at home and it's Thanksgiving break. So we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. So here's our matrix P. First thing I'm going to do is come up with the matrix of cofactors of P for the 1, 1, co oh, sorry, for the cofactors, we'll start with a little cofactor grid, plus, minus, minus, plus. For the 1, 1 cofactor, cover up the first row, first column, we get 1. For the 1, 2 cofactor, we cover up the first row, second column, we get a 2. Similarly, the 2, 1 entry, cover up the uh, first column, second row, we get a 2, and the 2, 2, we get a 1. Therefore, the adjoint of P is going to be the, oh, that's not how you spell P, the adjoint of P is going to be the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. Thankfully, this is already a symmetric matrix, so that is not necessary. And finally, for P inverse, we'll need to divide this thing by the determinant of P. Determinant of P is relatively easy to figure out. It's going to be 1 minus 2 times 2, so that'll be negative uh, 3. P, so this will be 1 over negative 3 times 1, negative 2, negative 2, 1. And we're just barely on camera at this point, so It'll be negative one-third, positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, and then negative one-third. Now for the fun part. We have P, we have A, we have P inverse. Next we get to multiply them in the appropriate order. So to reiterate what we're doing here, to get A prime, this is supposed to be P inverse times A times P. P inverse we had written down from the previous page. That is one-third, two-thirds, two-thirds, negative one-third. The matrix A we had from the previous page as well. That is three, one, four, two. And P we also had from the previous page. That is one, two, two, one. Now, again, for this multiplication, if I actually had access to a calculator, I would toss this all into a calculator and be done very quickly. But since I don't, I'm going to have to do this the fun way, which is by hand. That'll teach me a powerful lesson about assuming that I can take a break during my break. So first I'm going to multiply the a times the p because that seems to have fewer fractions, which I like better. So 3 times 1 plus 1 times 2, that will give us 5. 3 times 2 plus 1 times 1, that will give me 7. 1 times 4 plus 2 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 2 plus 2 times 1 is 10. Oh boy, this seems like it's going to be even more fun. This one I think I'm going to show my work a little bit better. So this will be negative one-third times five, so negative five-thirds plus two-thirds times eight, so that'll be sixteen-thirds. Negative one-third times seven, so negative seven-thirds. And then two-thirds times ten, so that'll be twenty-thirds. Five times two-thirds uh, plus negative one-third times eight, so minus eight-thirds. And then two thirds times seven minus one third times ten, so minus ten thirds. Okay, so it's looking like we're going to wind up with a lot of fractions in our answer. That's too bad, but sometimes that's just how math goes. Two thirds and then four thirds. All right, so here is the matrix of T relative to P. So to reiterate once more, what just happened was a prime is equal to p inverse times a times p. We can come up with a and p relatively easily, which allows us to, through the use of a little bit of uh, manipulation, come up with a nice and easy a prime. I hope that this was helpful, and I'll see you all for the next one.